Derbyshire traffic cops. It does have warning markers for potential firearms. Stand over it! You're under arrest. Attempt to supply class to be a drug. Police a thousand square miles. It's a crash, crash. Have you got any other injury other than your head? With some of the UK's most dangerous roads. I don't know what's been killed out of this. I don't know. Do you know how fast you were going? It's scary when stuff like this happens. In life and death situations. Get on the ground, you'll be taken! We've got runners. Face down! Yes, yes, successful stink. Around every corner. <gasps> Great acting, mate. There's a new challenge for the traffic cops. Step out of the vehicle now! Coming up. The traffic cops battling a surge in car crime. Got runners. down dangerous wanted suspects. You under arrest on suspicion of robbery. And teenage thieves on the run. We uh, sobbed over the fence and then towards that scaffolding. Across the East Midlands and Yorkshire, a sharp rise in car crime is stretching police forces. 2-8, high performance marks, vehicle, advanced driver, t factory. Vehicle thefts at the moment seem to be massively on the rise. In particular, we seem to be getting hit with a spate of two-in-one burglaries, whereby a person or a group of people will burgle an address purely to get the keys for the vehicles on the driveway. Traffic cops, like Matt Cork, face criminal gangs using tech and fake registrations to steal high-powered cars. There's a vehicle that's hit up a few miles away from here. Yeah, and basically, it's been identified today as a clone vehicle. From 7-1, this clone, it's been in around knots yesterday, all time last night at the same time, and then went eastbound. I'm going to be jumping out and looking over the side of bridge. Thieves try to avoid getting caught by using cloned car registrations, copying the identity of a genuine vehicle. Just remind me of the reg, say 1-5. 1-5. Do we know what colour the clone is? It's silver. Thank you. They use four or five different sets of number plates, regularly stopping and changing them to try and prevent us from keeping tabs on where they've been. It's just got underneath this. Yeah, sorry, yeah, thank you. So, just trying to make some ground now. Yeah, 2-8, I've got him in sight, giving him about 300 yards. So, at the minute, we're just waiting for some more units to get to us, uh, the view to put in a preemptive box on the vehicle. So, we'll look at doing that as safely as we possibly can. As Matt tails the suspect, control directs other units to help stop the car. We want to get things in place, tactics in place to prevent a pursuit ever happening and get the occupants under control. But with that comes a risk both to myself, to my colleagues, to members of the public and to these people that are trying to get away. There are now 10 units from three different forces in pursuit. Two forces, you're left in the car, come up and get someone to dance and say, do you have to put the tactic on? Yeah, please. Uh, we'll look at putting a box on when we get to safety on. We've got a uh, quite a good steer on the zone here. We've been some massive clip and we'll get it on. Move up on me. Art as the units surround the suspect. Yeah, coming off, off, off of the surface. The driver pulls off the motorway. At that moment in time, they've got nothing to lose. They're not 
thinking about the risks they're taking. It's absolutely vital to remain calm. We've got to have some sort of tactical resolution in place to try and bring the pursuit to a stop safely. And the quicker we're able to do that, the better. With the pursuit crossing orders, Nottinghamshire's control takes the lead. by the Nottinghamshire officers. While all four men are taken for questioning, officers search the suspect's car. This was shook right under the driver's seat. The police have found two bags containing electronic scanners and transmitters. entry vehicles um, and then some of the other equipment including laptops uh, and OBD plugs appear to be what they would then use to start the car having opened it um, and drive it away without a key. Matt continues searching the bag. Stickers so that uh, double-sided sticky tape so that plates can be swapped over almost instantaneously. Crafty balaclava. Uh, so everything in that bag suggests to me that these people are out up to no good which is obviously why they're in a clone vehicle vehicles on false plates and uh, if we'd not got on top of them tonight I dare say there'd be a few people waking up to find their cars looking off the drive in the way in the morning. With keyless entry, keyless start, you've got an app and there is no key. But with the removal of a physical key for a car comes signals which can be intercepted. There are people getting their hands on technology that is 
intercepting these signals who almost trick the car into thinking that that is the owner with the genuine key. Coming up. Traffic cops track down a dangerous suspected car thief. Keep your hands where I can see them. Have you got anything on you that you shouldn't have? What you need to understand is you're coming with us. And car criminals putting lives at risk. All I'll say is how do you think you'd have felt if I'd have come knocked on a door and said that you've been dragged down road? Oh my God. They don't care. On the M1 in Derbyshire, traffic cop Sergeant Scott Riley is responding to an urgent call for backup. Not behind the stolen car, um, just going past services. Officers from Nottinghamshire are ahead tailing a suspect car. It's a black Audi S7 being stolen from North Ants. For the minute, we're just racing to catch up. Across the UK, a car is stolen every eight minutes. Car crime, burglaries have all gone through the roof. This vehicle yesterday is involved in an incident where a knife was used. Did you have a description of the weapon? Control search for more information about the suspect vehicle. Uh, from any small units that are following after this vehicle, please be advised it does have warning markers for potential firearms. These criminals are some of the most dangerous criminals we've come across. We've seen them offer weapons towards homeowners. We've seen them offer weapons towards police. We've seen them drive at police, do anything to stop us stopping them. We're not making any attempt to stop this vehicle at all. Anyone who's been involved in this incident will be Nottinghamshire's firearms units en route. So we're, we're just treading a bit carefully. An unmarked car ahead tails the suspect. We're covertly following it at the minute, so we're not getting too close to it. They will do absolutely anything in their power to get away. They, they don't care about hurting us. They don't care about hurting the members of the public. Because they know that if we catch them, they will go to prison for a long time. Multiple police units from two forces close in on the suspects. to you, firearms, it really focuses your mind that actually the only right thing to do is get that person handcuffed and take any ability away from them to cause you any harm. Any weapons, anything that would hurt me, hurt my colleagues? What's the problem? Have you got anything on you that you shouldn't have? Sort of. Okay, what, what language do you speak? Romania. Romania? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, right. You've been stopped. Yeah. That vehicle you're driving yeah. is reported as stolen. Yeah. That is help. a stolen car. <coughs> stolen. <coughs> Not yours. Yeah, Not your car, is it? my car. It's a friend's car. Okay. Well, whosever car it is has told the police yeah. stolen. Stolen. Yes. While Scott detains the suspect, officers check the man's ID. Have you been arrested before? No. No? First time in cuffs? In the UK? Yeah? How long have you been in the UK? One years. One years? Yes. Yeah. The more and more I'm hearing on the radio and the more and more we look into his past, 
you then get a sense of who you're dealing with and what you're dealing with. Are you giving the correct details? Are you giving the police correct details? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scott suspects the man's provided a false name. A search of the car uncovers some alarming items. That's a knife. Jump on it. Another knife. There's only one reason for carrying these. The protection to use them. Intimidation, aren't they? Massive intimidation. I mean. Look. false name that he uh, no. tried to give us. Despite being given a false name. Yeah, that's in, isn't it, 100%. Scott believes they've identified the suspect. So what's he wanted for? This individual's wanted for a very serious crime where he's used a knife to obtain that car. He's driven halfway up the country with that stolen property. So what lengths is he going to go to to get away from us? I'll lock this chap up. Yeah. Uh, what's the details of the robbery? Between the hours of 20 past 7, 20 past 8, uh, robbery, GBH. OK, mate. At this moment in time, you're under arrest on suspicion of robbery. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm to not mention my questions, something which you later on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand? I know, I, know, I know English is not your first language, but what you need to understand is you're coming with us. You understand that, yeah? It's got to go to the back, force policy, mate. I know it's uncomfortable. That's how they've got to go. That, that's how they've got to go. No. no especially because of what you've been arrested for. You've been arrested for a violence offence. So I'm not putting my colleagues here. A robbery is violent. All right, a robbery is violent, trust me. So now what we've got to do is go and do the fun bit and write all the paperwork up. Looking at the weapons that have been found in that vehicle presents a real danger to officers when we stop in that vehicle and then that's a little bit of a wake up call for you that you need every now and again to, to remind you that it, it is a dangerous place out there. On the northern edge of the county, Derbyshire traffic cop Chris Wells Jackson is playing catch up to another suspected car theft. South Yorkshire have got a fail to start with a possible cloned vehicle. So we're going to make his way up to the border just to give him some assistance in case they come on to us. The scale of car crime, burglaries, theft of motor vehicle, vehicle cloning at the moment is absolutely ridiculous. We'll get criminals that come from Sheffield, from Nottingham, Manchester, Leicester that come into our county with the sole purpose of finding a high powered, high valued vehicle, and taking it. Yes, yes, the lights out. It's going to be a D-camp shortly, I think. Yeah, possibly one, no possible D-camp, it's a dead end. South Yorkshire and the uh, Derbyshire officers have gone into the, the woods after him, so hopefully they'll uh, pick him up shortly. The helicopter's above him, we're not going to lose him. Yeah, possibly one, uh, yes, we're still watching this male running away. He has a very small dog with him, and uh, it's running alongside him. He's making good ground, he's far off the railway station. Quite a few cops stood down there on a containment, so it can't be far away. After a 30-minute search, the runaway suspect disappears. I can't believe we've not found him, though. I know, obviously, tree line's quite thick, or helicopter being above them. But moments later, control updates. It's a Range Rover in black. It's stolen in Chesterfield. Yeah, we see. It's another call about another stolen car. He's been stolen off the driveway um, and he's smashed the window to get into it and managed to get his started somehow. Land Rover, Range Rover thefts. So common at the moment. They seem to have a, a way of getting into them without the keys and they're away in a few, few seconds most of the time. 
with a number of units still searching the South Yorkshire border for the missing suspect. Police resources are stretched. If it comes up to us, we're definitely not going to have any team back here for the winter. And if it's a team that's stealing, I mean, this is the second one into it this time tonight. Yeah, so it's just sending that car out to the show. You get seriously organised criminals that will actively go out, target particular vehicles and particular properties, they'll do the research, they'll go out in the daytime and look at the properties they want to break into, look for the cars that they want to steal, they'll go out later that night and steal the vehicle. And it's not just one or two vehicles, they'll go on to steal four or five. Sometimes you're looking at 250, pounds worth of vehicles going in the space of four or five hours. Say again, so you want to go and look at CCTV for it? Chris is asked to check the victim's house for any footage of the suspects. Yeah, we see. The IP, the don't be at home, if there's any, obviously, the TV on the street. She says that the vehicle was parked on the side of the road. As Chris makes his way, control updates on the victim's son. He got into his friend's car and driven down the road. As he's holding from just sit on his sit back of him and then ran in. He's put himself at a massive risk. Obviously, the stolen cars hit him in a bid to get away. He then spun 180, and he's collided with a parked vehicle. Luckily for him, the occupant of the stolen car has not got out with any sort of weapon and tried to uh, try to injure him. Flipped us completely around in the car, like completely around. But obviously, because he was like being in a bumper car, yeah, as he yeah, did, yeah. He's, he's turned me this way, yeah. so I'm facing that way. And then the last time I seen it, I just see that I'm. That'll just been the weight. Road. That'll be the weight yeah, of his yeah. vehicle. It's one of those things because this car was stolen. I didn't think that he would damage the car in the process. If you know what I mean? But he just wants to get away. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah, yeah, all, yeah. all I'll say is, in my experience, they're willing to have a go with us and hurt us. Yeah. So if they're willing to do that to us, what they're going to do to you? Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So it, it's just. It's one of those things, and all I'll say is don't put yourself in danger because it's a car. I know it's your car and it's precious to you, but at the end of the day, it's a car and you can re replace it. But if you, yeah, for whatever reason, you went. the way that it made my bum feel, I could see. Of course, yeah, of course. But all I'll say is, how do you think you'd have felt if I'd have come and knocked on a door and said that you've been dragged down the road and killed? Oh my God. They don't care. It's gone badly wrong a few times in the past where people have chased after stolen cars in their own vehicles and the criminals have turned on them beat them up to an extent where they could have quite easily died and they've come away with serious injuries, sometimes life-changing. I looked him straight in the face twice, once just looked when he was ramming us and then once when he was outside here, like, I recognised the guy. The victim's CCTV might provide clues to the suspect's ID. So this is when it happened at 2042. So this is the car outside. Mm. And then... Yeah, I rang the police at 2044. Yeah, that'd be about right, yeah. Yeah, and then this is obviously... Oh, what's that doing? Oh, my God. It's not letting me play back. A lot of the time, we find that criminals actually tamper with people's cameras. They're actually starting to jam people's Wi-Fi signals to those devices at the time that they're committing the offence. So you sort of have that blank spot of a few minutes when the offence takes place and then everything seems normal again with the cameras. Has anyone else got CCTV? I've just put an email thing onto our Facebook group okay. for you. So this is what, this is it. Mm -hmm. So she heard that, took a photo, and then this is equal now, she wants to be gone a lot more, obviously we don't realise yeah. it. You can't, you can't see anything. Oh. It's a bit like, I obviously, like, if I was going off in my car, yeah. and then I come closer, and then obviously I realise that he's in the car, and then literally it just went. It's, I've never seen a car go that fast in this. Yeah. It just went. Land Rovers, Range Rovers are so um, so common at the moment. They've just got a, a device that reads the code of the key. A lot of modern cars with modern technology have also got the cons that it makes it easier to steal because the criminals also have technology that appears to be better than the ones that immobilise the vehicle. It was literally that my son, he went out to the shop, it must have been really short because he's left here. It was five minutes, so they must have been watching it. They must have been watching it. I think they have must have been watching it because we have had nothing on car. I've had nothing with that car while I was talking. Yeah. Nothing. Essentially, seeing him walk out, I think no one's in the house now, I'll try my luck. And yeah. It's not just somebody that's taking an opportunity as they walk past the vehicle in the street and sticking a screwdriver in the lock and 
popping it open and hot wiring it. It's people that are actively going out to steal cars that are worth 50, 60,000 pounds, sometimes more, because they know that they're gonna get a lot of cash for it. And a good night's work for them is 250, 300 grand's worth of vehicles. That's something that would take me 10, 15 years to earn, working honestly. It's just the reality of it, unfortunately. I'd love to be able to sit there and tell a victim that we're going to be able to lock the offenders up and that they're going to get put in prison, but I just have to be, be brutally honest with them and tell them that the chances are very slim of them seeing the, the car again and chances are it's it's going to be used in more crime or it's going to get found dumped somewhere and they're probably never going to want to drive it again because the criminals had a hold of it. It's, it's just a complete invasion of privacy. Coming up. Just quietly on camera. Got uh, decamp, decamp, four out and running. Teenage car thieves on the run. Yeah, he's coming to another race. And a race to stop another stolen car. Right, move up, move up, move up. border with South Yorkshire. Yes, we just acquired it on camera. Traffic cop Chris Wells Jackson and officers from the two forces are part of an air to ground search for a stolen Audi. MS31, uh, it's double back on you. We've got uh, D camp, D camp, four out and running. And 849, it has D camp. I'm literally about a mile away from where it is. MS31, uh, we've got two to ground. This is the only way out of this is with two men on the run in a nearby housing estate. Chris races to the scene. Yeah, boss 3 one there. We saw him going through that uh, extension. The police helicopter directs unit towards the missing suspects. Just outside the house. Yeah, boss 3 one uh, got a format unit put together. Uh, keep going forward, please. Still the vehicle is uh, to the right. Unit, turn left there, please. Turn left. Lead unit, stop there, stop there, on your left, on your left. So there's outbuildings from the second vehicle, you're right outside. Uh, outbuildings, uh, to your left there. They came over the, uh, the fence at the rear, and then it went into that extension area, just on the left of the property, as you're looking at him. I want to say dog in, so come out now. Can't see him. It's not quite tall enough. For the first time ever. I can see it back, so if no one goes out, I can see him. Get around the side here. I should better off going around the back. I'll go next door. There's always something in the back of your mind when you're in that scenario thinking, if I climb into this building, what am I going to be faced with? Is there anybody in there that's willing to harm me? And your experience tells you that you need to be on edge constantly because you never know who you're dealing with. Recently, I've dealt with jobs where these lads have got knives on them. That gate's locked, I can't get over. Is it literally the other side of this wall? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they wouldn't have run out at the back door, really? You couldn't get out of the back, but Emma was saying they've not. Three. They're right above me, and they've not come out the other side. The only other way they could have gone is in there, innit? There is scaffolding on the back of that uh, extension that's been built. Uh, it's possible there's a uh, hiding place under there. Uh, up in the corner there, the back of that extension, we uh, sobbed over the fence and then towards that scaffolding. Right, well, I'll drop in. Go on. I'll get in. You're not going in that, that, you can't get in that door there, can you? Tom, check door. Ash, I've got a foot there. He's uh, on the on the floor bars. Come on here, mate. It's coming out now. <laughs> yeah, stick your feet on here, mate. Lift your feet up. Quite sneaky, really, because when you actually climb in there on face value, there's nobody in it, but when you lift the floorboards up, they were playing quite tightly underneath it, so... Bring your feet down onto this bin here. Drop yourself down. Put your head on that bolt. 
So you send down, otherwise you're going to be sent down. Great failure under arrest, Fisher theft of motor vehicle failed to stop in his driving. A lot of the burglaries and thefts that I've dealt with and the pursuits that follow as a result of those vehicles being stolen are a mixture of different people. But to discover that it's a couple of teenagers that are in that vehicle that have been out stealing other cars and you look at their previous criminal history and you see that they've got a list as long as your arm of thefts and burglaries, it's just unbelievable to think that they're not even 20 years old. Uh, apologies, we are going to have to leave now. Uh, but uh, thanks for the help. Yes, yes, thank you very much for your assistance. It's appreciated. Yeah, the next one. Too late. See you later. Cheers, mate. See you later, mate. The two that have been detained, one of them, I've heard his name a few times, banded around. And uh, he's very well known for being involved in burglaries and theft of motor vehicles. I think he's only a, a teenager, so. It looks like his career as a, a criminal started very early and is continuing. Fingers crossed he'll get uh, a decent sentence. That number plate doesn't, doesn't match that thin plate. Coming up, there's two Land Rovers with the yeah, same number no. plate. The traffic cops uncover another stolen vehicle on the move. Catching criminal gangs in stolen or cloned cars is a nightly operation for the traffic cops. Eleven miles east of Derby, near the M1. I'm out my vehicle, um, looking over the overbridge. Traffic cop Andy Swift is trying to spot a cloned car linked to a spate of thefts from heavy goods vehicles. Yeah, he's committed under the bridge. Thank you for that. Yes, he's just gone under the under bridge. I think that's where we are. Tag it four seven, it's contact, contact. Lane two, speed seven zero. Just go into a pursuit, uh, it will be authorised, and the vehicle's still waiting to. Anyway, from Tanker 47, the plan will be if it keeps maintaining lanes like this, then it'll be a case of a, uh, a multi lane box. A multi lane box requires four units one to hold traffic back, and three others to surround the vehicle and bring it to a stop. Both tanks, two vehicles uh, on the track, close by. As Andy keeps his distance, backup is on its way. Traffic cop Sergeant Scott Riley is nearby. Yeah, I'm Tom Swift, take it out past me. Stand by there, you'll see me. Sergeant just got past me, do you want me to come up to you? Yes, yes, commit south, Scott. We're a bit of a mile now to the next junction, so yeah, move out. Where's Oscar Juliet move? Have you caught up yet? Come on, get with us. With enough units in place, the officers move in to surround the car. Right, are we all together? Yes. Do a three vehicle box. I'll go front, whoever's second, you go near side, and a third vehicle, you go off side. Yes, yes. Right, move up, move up, move up. Hey. Could you follow this office, please? So we can have a chat with you. Swiftly, they'll follow you. 
the suspect car contains a family, not who the officers were expecting. So we shall take him to the exit and we'll sort out what we can. So obviously someone's driving around in the wrong vehicle. Sir, I don't know what my sergeant's explained or, or not so far. No, there's two Land Rovers two with the yeah, same number plates. One's registered T-Self yeah. and one's registered somewhere else in the country. That number plate doesn't, doesn't match that VIN, the, the VIN plate. While the car's identity is checked, Scott talks to the driver. Did you buy it from a garage or a private sale? Private sale. Private check the for a car. Yeah. I get ten pounds online. The HPI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Clear. If it's yep. not clear, I know why. The chassis number that you've uh, passed is uh, we've done a check on it. We've got a report on it. Stolen uh, from the London area. Received. Right. Bad news is this is a stolen car. Yeah. I pre I appreciate you bought it legitimately, but this is currently a stolen car from the London area. You've done your HPI check on that, yeah. but that isn't this car. So your HPI would have come back clear because that is a car that looks exactly the same as this one. But the problem is the VIN plate, this little one here, this, which is a vehicle there. identification number that comes back to a, a different year and a different vehicle. So it looks like you've been defrauded, unfortunately. So what, what we're going to have to do, I'm not going to give you good news, I'm not going to lie. The police are going to have to take this vehicle from you now because we're lawfully bound to do so because somebody somewhere has lost a very nice car. I get that you haven't stolen that. I absolutely get that. But that is somebody else's car. You see, I said, I take it to the police station. I give you my car. And I, I, I sort of get about my money. To... I, I, really, I really understand what you're saying, but it's not something I can do because it is a high-value stolen car. So it's not something I can just let go. It's really sad because we've actually almost transferred the victim because we've just now uncovered another victim who's lost just as much money as the person who lost the initial car. We've absolutely got to get the car back to the right owner or to the insurance company that paid out for it. We don't want to leave you stranded. If you're happy that you and your family can stay here until somebody picks you up from Leeds, that helps us, I'll be honest. But the offer is there to take you back back up a bit further north if you need it. But if you're happy stopping here and getting family to pick you up from here, that's great. So I'll let you make that decision. Can we get your family out of the car so this man can get the vehicle? That's all right. Okay. Do you want to? Do you want to get? Do you want to ask him to get out? With the recovery underway, Scott and Andy check the car's history. So he's insured, he's managed to insure it and everything. So basically, the owner that's got the genuine one, his V5 has been superseded. The DVLA have basically think that the one that's still running around London, they think that's been moved on. So the DVLA would never know? No. So there's only one vehicle on PNC, but two insured. Yeah. Unfortunately, you've got to check your VIN number on you. That's the only way you can do it. Yeah. Because they've got keys, haven't they? So they've got the pre code and no pre code. And no. In the last six months, across the East Midlands and South Yorkshire, the police received nearly 7,000 reports of burglary and car theft. It's frustrating because every incident you respond to, you know that there is a victim. A victim that's going to be seriously affected, not just for tonight, not just for the night after, but for a long time to come. The prisons are so full, the system's so stretched, that, that people aren't getting the sentences now that they used to. And we're dealing with the same people on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis. And if those people were in prison where they should be, then this level of offending would come down. In this episode, We've got runners 
Germany to all town centre. The man the police believe failed to stop in a cloned car linked to burglary offences has been charged with dangerous driving and no insurance. One detained the dog had got another one in the garden. Another runaway suspect was charged with handling stolen goods. Put your hands behind your back now. The two men caught with laptops and transmitters were charged with going equipped to steal. All four men are currently released on court bail. And where I can see them. He's been arrested for a violence offence, so I'm not putting my apologies. The two men arrested at a motorway service station in a stolen car with knives inside have been released under investigation, under suspicion of robbery and burglary, while the police further their inquiries. Realised that he's in the car and then just went. No suspects have been identified in connection with the theft of the Range Rover Evoque near Chesterfield. But the car was found the following day by the victim's son. We uh, sobbed over the fence and then towards that scaffolding. Then Two teenagers arrested near Sheffield after running from a stolen car have been released on bail under suspicion of burglary, dangerous driving, no insurance, and possession of drugs. Commissioner of the Beverage. Right, move up, move up, move up. And the cloned Range Rover Evoque, stopped by Scott and Andy on the M1, was linked to a spate of thefts from lorries and confirmed as stolen. It has been returned to its insurers. Next Monday at 8, we join Helen Skelton and the gang for brand new winter on the farm. Taking you inside the incident room as detectives try to crack the murder case of Yorkshire mum, Wendy Speaks, brand new Wednesday at 8. Back to tonight, an ex-miner shows his grit as the team battle to save his arm in Casualty 24-7, every second counts, new next.